Hey guys, Clavel here, and today we're going over a very important topic. I wanted to make a separate video for this. I've covered this before, but it was in its own kind of creation thing. But we're going to be covering how to detect when a player is looking at something, a block, an entity, a location, I don't know. Um, and we're going to cover two methods. One is going to be the one that you can do without a data pack. It's really fast, but less efficient. I mean, but less accurate, but it's also way more efficient. And then we're going to go over the ray casting method, which requires a data pack, but it's like super duper accurate, easy to uh, tune to the right values. Uh, but anyways, so we're going to go over the first one because it's very interesting. Um, this is one that I saw posted on the MCC resources and uh, I've tweaked it a little uh, recently to create some interesting stuff that I'll be showing off in the next video uh, that has to do with hitbox detection. Um, but this is detecting if you're facing something. So essentially, as you can tell, when, let me deactivate this, when I look somewhat towards the direction of the armor stand, it starts glowing. And then when it's out of my view, it stops glowing. And it's not perfect because you can see the um, how the detection only works when I look uh, somewhere near the center of its body. So, and then a little bit above its body as well. So there is some offset issues that you can probably mess with, but, uh, it's kind of hard to tune this one, but it does work in just one command. And this is the long, long command. So I'm going to pull it up inside a, um, its own file and a function file. So you can see the full command better and how it works is kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and do this as a uh, look. All right, so this is kind of long, so we're gonna have to go over it slowly, step by step. It's a very big execute. All right, so essentially, I'm going to use some blocks to over-exaggerate what's happening. So the player is gonna be right in the center. It's the white, okay? So it anchors to the player's eyes, which just makes sense. You're looking where the player's eyes are, and you're going to face the execute command towards this entity. Now you can change this at E to be whatever entity you want to detect if they're looking at. Like usually I would do like an entity with a tag called like face me or something. All right. And you're going to look towards that entity's eyes. Okay. Then you're going to anchor to its feet and you're going to move to, uh, sorry, anchor to your feet and then move in the direction of that entity. Uh, you can also remove this anchored feet to change the, uh, elevation and stuff and mess with some of these values to change where the hitbox detects it. But anyway, so you can, it moves one block towards it. So we're going to exaggerate by moving like five blocks towards it. Okay. All right. So then it rotates as the person who's playing the command, which is just the original player. Okay. So let's say I'm looking this direction, right? So now it rotates to face this, the command over here starts off by facing that it moves forward then it rotates to look the direction i was looking right all right and then it moves backwards in the direction i'm facing that's what these three carrots mean the third one means the direction you're facing forward or backwards and negative one means backwards so if i'm facing this way it moves backwards by the same amount of units so that's approximately four blocks because triangles and it ends up over here right so then it says if you can find the player within 0.3 blocks, then you are looking at it. So this is where you start to think, wait, what? How does this constitute as looking at it? How does this work? Um, some of you might have already gotten it. So let's do some hypotheticals. So it's good to, when you have some like interesting math equations you don't understand, it's good to think about the extremes. So let's think about the extremes. If I was looking at it and I played this, what would it do? It would move forward while facing it. It would rotate as me where I am looking the same direction as the entity and then it would move back the exact same amount of blocks. And what would it be? It would end up right where I'm standing. So of course it would find me. I am looking at it, that's true. Okay, now let's do the second extreme where I'm looking directly away from it. All right, so it moves towards it, then it turns around because that's the way I was facing, and then it moves backwards the same amount. Does, <laughs> will the selector be able to find me? Hell no, I'm way more than 0 0.3 blocks away. So I'm definitely not looking at it. And we can also, go into the near ranges uh, to test near situations. So if I'm like this, uh, so it would move forward and then it's like this and then it would move backwards. And when it's moving backwards, it would be something like this, um, right? And this would be within the 0.3 blocks range considering that we call five blocks one block, right? So that would be close enough to pick it up. 
So that's kind of how it works. It uses two vectors, one vector facing the entity, and then it does to uh, tail to toe method where you connect the uh, head of one vector to the tail of the other and moves backwards and you end up with a net displacement of some value. So if I did this with say a triangle, then if I did it while I was looking 90 degrees, because 180 is kind of extreme, um, then it would move forward like this, and then it would move backwards like this. One, two, three, four, five approximately. And then the net displacement from the player is this line right here. So we're basically just checking that if the distance of from this end point to the player is within a certain amount, if this is small enough hypotenuse uh, is essentially what it's saying. So hopefully that some of you could understand that, but if you don't understand it, that's all right. All you need to know is you change this value to make it the bigger the value, the easier it is to see if the player, the bigger the angle is. So if I make this one, then basically anything in front of me will be picked up. Uh, and then the other value you can change is who it's looking at, which is right here. And you can also change the facing to be a block. So that's where the do it with blocks comes in. It's literally the exact same command, except it's checking if you're facing, you try and you face a specific coordinate. So then it works with this block. Now you can actually make this value way more small. So you can make it 0.1 to make it way more accurate. Um, but again, the distance also comes into play. So keep in mind that this works from infinite distance away. And the further I am away, the less accurate I have to be because it creates an invisible cone. And this is where a conic selection comes in and I'll come into that in my next video. Um, but there's some ways we can manipulate it to limit the distance uh, using a couple tricks. But anyways, so that's how to detect if you're looking at something roughly, uh, but not accurately and it's hard to control. So the next one, hopefully that didn't take too long, is how to do it with ray casting. So we're gonna go back into this look. This is going to be a ray casting command now. So I, cover, I covered ray casting before. You're basically playing the exact same command but in a different location over and over and over again. So we just need to do execute positioned one. So this means one block in front, run function test look. All right, so we're gonna add particles to this though. So we're gonna do a flame particle or a crit particle and only one crit particle. So that way we can see what's going on. So if we do function test look, you can see, boom, it drew a line from my feet, but it used the max command limit of 65,536. So what this does is I am looking this way. The positioned moves one block forward in the direction I'm looking, and then it plays itself again. So when it plays itself again, it does the particle, it moves again, one more forward, and one more forward, and one more forward, and one more forward. That's generally how raycasting works. Now we have to add some criteria here because again, you don't want this to do 65, 535. So you wanna check if the block that you're going to end up in is air. That way it plays particles right up until it hits a wall or it encounters the uh, world border because like if it goes outside your rendered chunks it's not considered air so that's only 449. Uh, the next thing you'd want to do is whenever you play it you want to do anchored to the eyes just like that uh, anchored with an n so now it'll come out of your eyes which makes more sense all right so the next adjustment is we have to create some kind of hitbox to detect when you look at something or when you look at a block. So one thing you can do if you're just doing it for a block, you can do execute if block. And I would do one forward. Uh, this is where the block versus entity comes into play. If you're checking if they're in a block, you would change this thing to be here. That way your raycast goes one block into the block. So if you're currently in air, move forward one, play one more time. This would make you go one inside a block. So then you can say if the block you're in is and let's get these coordinates uh what was it ah ah okay so if you're inside this block run set block uh gray glazed terracotta so we're just going to use the same uh, uh pink glazed terracotta so you're checking if the block is there uh, you can also do um, some other stuff to check what block you're in, but it's very simple. Terra, terracotta. Okay. So this will just basically say if you're inside a terracotta block, sorry, 
if you're inside a terracotta block, just like that, then set the block to gray glazed terracotta. And if you wanted to do like a specific coordinate, um, you'd probably have to do um, like summon an area effect cloud and check what the coordinates are on it and if the coordinates are um, those coordinates. But uh, anyways, so if I run that, let's just go ahead and deactivate this and let's copy these. Execute as at a, a at, at s anchored eyes run function test look okay and then this one should be the same so now you're going to see a constant line that's being drawn and it's laggy because i made it infinite length until you hit a non-air block it'll go one block into that block so you can see it kind of goes one inside it it's kind of hard to tell though because it's moving so fast but uh it's not picking up the pink glazed terracotta. Okay, sorry, I had to cut for a sec. Um, the position value needs to be less than one, otherwise there's a chance that you step over it because you like jump from the edge of the block to the other side of the block. So I go ahead. I went ahead and adjusted that. And again, these are values that are really easy to adjust. You just change the position to change the accuracy, but it also decreases the efficiency because you play a lot more stuff but you'll see that will turn it as soon as I'm looking at it perfectly when I'm looking at it though, like perfect hitboxing detection for the block. Uh, so this is very perfect, but very inefficient. So some of the things you can do to fix this is you can add a scoreboard called range. So you can do scoreboard players remove at s range one, and then you can check if score at s range matches one. And before you play it, Let's see if range exists. Scoreboard objectives add range dummy. So before you play it, you can say scoreboard players set at a range 20. Okay, so then it will count down the range. So the line will be much shorter and more efficient there. Therefore, because it will play less commands when you're looking out into the distance. So um, 20 to calculate how far it'll travel, you basically just have 20 times 0 0.5. So 20 times 0 0.5 is 10, so it'll travel 10 blocks approximately. Uh, and I like to make the range like five blocks or less because that's how far the reach of the player is, uh, but you can do whatever you want. Now, if you want to detect entities, that's easy. There's a secret trick here that I'm going to show you that I'll cover a little bit more in depth uh, in the hitbox video, but there is a perfect hitbox for uh, entities. So you do as at E, uh, DX equals zero positioned down 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 if entity at s dx equals zero run effect give at s glowing so this is just a text if something is just looking at a general entity so uh then let me just add this command here and now we can accurately test this. So you can see it works very well. And if I remove the crit particle, it's even better than the other because look how accurate it is. I have to touch the actual model essentially for it to trigger. Of course, uh, armor stands are skinnier than you think, but it pretty much have to touch the actual model for it to trigger. And the interesting thing about this is it works perfectly on anything. So the villager, you can see it just bare. It only activates when I touch him. And you can see a spider. It only activates when I touch him. So this is probably the best system. Um, and to prevent things from going through, uh, you could just do, you could give like a tag to this entity. And then you can say like, if nothing, unless something has the tag, keep doing the right cast. Um, and one closing thought is one, if you're using data packs, for this, uh, not those command blocks, there you're probably going to want to have like a function before it, right? That says start, and this function will do those things that I had before. Well, what you can do is you can do tag add s, add test uh, this, and then tag add s remove this, right? And then you can play the raycast, which would be this function. Okay. Now, the thing that you may get confused, and I don't want to see this in the comments because I'm discussing it now is we say as right here. So now we don't know who shot the raycast, right? Because as is no longer the player, it is this random entity like the spider at the end of this command, if you play say a function. 
right? Uh, so inside this function, as is no longer referring to the player, and at is no longer referring to where the player is. So you don't know who, the, what player shot it, multiplayer friendly, gone. Well, that's what the solution is for. So now you know who the player is because it's an entity with a tag of this. And you know, as long as, as long as you don't play another raycast in the sub function, you know that any time that you say tag equals this, it's referring to the original person who played the raycast. So that's just like a shortcut to keep track of who's who. Uh, but hopefully that went over enough for you guys uh, to get some good understanding of how to detect when you're looking at things. This is by far the best system that I use in all my stuff. Um, then there's also the shortcut if you don't like data packs. Uh, but anyways, if you thought this was useful, uh, don't detect yourself. <laughs> um, but anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.